Hello everyone and welcome to Veterans in Crisis podcast. Today we have Dan and Ashley, both from Fighting Minds, which is a exciting new service that's came to Sun recently. You alright lads? Yeah, good, yeah, good. good. Thank you. But uh, we'll start off really, you can just describe what Fighting Minds is all about and then we'll get back to your sort of, your time in the military. So yeah. not. Yeah, so basically Fighting Minds started back in 2000 and... 19 at the beginning of 2019 basically in january 2019 and um, i always wanted to do something to do with veterans and i think i think that was more to do with the fact that um obviously i was in the army and then you know i was i, I was fresh into city street if you like and um, but i didn't want to muddy the water um, and 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 i don't think it, obviously the previous people that we had uh, within fighting minds wanted to muddy the water and 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 almost uh, wanted to do something new um, and we we identified that in work is where we can best hit sort of veterans those that are potentially you know um, not necessarily uh, suffering but have the potential to to sort of go down that path uh, and uh, we we identified that as a as a, as a route uh, through access to work. Um, access to work is basically a government funded uh, program, um, and we get now recommendations from the um, holistic workplace assessors, which uh, nine times out of ten are psychologists, and they'll recommend our services to provide some sort of transitional uh, element or. Um, mental health, uh, things like coping strategies uh, for, for mental health or physical disabilities. So mental, uh, physical or actual hidden disabilities. When I talk about hidden disabilities, things like dyslexia, ADHD, um, Asperger's, dysle- uh, dyscalculia, uh, dyspraxia, all sort of the na- neurodiverse side of things. And we can provide coping strategies, technical training. So for instance, assistive technology on, on the actual sort of computers, we can we can use that um, or a disability awareness training or condition awareness training which is mainly sort of focused towards the employer and actually sort of letting the employer know that the difficulties that that person potentially is going to face in work but also the potential that 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 individual is going to bring and and, and that's really key for for veterans ex-servicemen and women uh, themselves the, the the actual things that they're bringing to to the party if you like or the things that they're bringing into the workplace but you know there are potential um, and i say potential because it's not everybody but potential for for, for, for those um, to to if you like head on the slippery path and um, so that in a nutshell really is it's it's in work support for veterans so it's a national thing because i i, I realize you're not in sunland today uh, but you do share a building with the seed project in there. That's correct. Yeah, we are, we are national. We can provide across, uh, and and that that's basically to do with the, the the business model or the the model that we occupy, and that's uh, identifying sort of psychologists across the country where um, they work on a sort of freelance basis, um, and they can hit veterans individually, um, nationally, so right up to sort of Scotland. Um, down to uh, the sort of London and the home counties down that way, but yeah, like you say, we've got we've we've just recently moved in in January into the next step centre, which is which is in Sunderland with the SID project, um, and I've got a, a, a one of my veterans is actually a veteran he works out of there, and that's that's basically a, a place where you know veterans can go in or any anyone really that is you know um, got some sort of neurodiversity mental health um, condition or um, you know are struggling within work or struggling to get on the actual uh, uh, the, the the ladder sort of for work um, and and help can be, be provided through that through either said or through fighting mind so did you set it up then is this your it was myself um a lady called elaine um, who was my who, who was my employer? She, she still is my employer, um, and um, and a, a guy called Chris, um, and we we set that up. And Chris subsequently left the organisation, uh, but uh, from that it sort of spurred us in the right direction um, in terms of uh, helping veterans and brought on Marsha, 
Um, and we also brought on um, a, a, a lady called Jude, who we've got in Manchester. Um, we've got Gary, who's up in uh, Sunderland. He was initially down in the in, in south in the, uh, the southeast. Uh, but he uh, he was still serving, sort of. He was just finishing off his 22 year career, um, and he's now left and he, he joined us, um, and he sort of manages the the uh, office up in Sunderland. So yeah. is you is your model to to use veterans as well? Please. Um, well, I think I think it's sort of you've got to practice what you preach, really. Um, and and I think uh, as much as um, I can I can go to it sort of civilians and uh, and and those that have. A qualification in sort of coaching or mentoring or a qualification in psychology. I think veterans understand veterans, and I think you you'll you'll know more than anyone. Joe. Um, veterans do know veterans, and they know the sort of implications that can sort of arise from transition and transitioning out of the military, especially. Well, that's the the model. That's the way I use it because the peer support from another veteran, you kind of beat it really. You know. If, if you've been through the same sort of stuff, you've suffered the same sort of things, everyone can relate to what you're talking about. That's it, yeah. I, I, always, I always have the clients saying, um, if you go to someone, a civilian uh, psychiatrist, say, and they say things like, oh, I know how you feel. Well, obviously, yeah. you don't know how you feel. But if you're talking to another veteran, chances yeah. are the day now how you feel, you're getting shot yeah. at and stuff like that. Or they have an understanding, you know. They, there's more of a level of understanding, and 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 I think, and, and for me as well. Um, and I don't I don't discredit any of the psychologists that I use or anything like that. Vet, veterans are, are, are extremely flexible, though. You know, you can like literally ask them to go anywhere, and they'll go for you, or they'll go and do anything. It's you part know. of your lifestyle. It's, it's part of the so, job. Yeah, no, You've got no standard. choice. <laughs> so you carry it, carry it across. So, yeah. so. Moving further back, what were you? What uh, where did you serve, or what were you in? What battalion or so regiment? I, do you, Marsh, Marsh, do you want to go first? There? Yeah, yeah. So I was in the Royal Signals. Uh, I left uh, the army probably two and a half years ago now. It's back in yeah, about two and a half years ago. I was serving Royal Signals for thirteen years, nearly fourteen years. Uh, I did numerous uh, regiments across the Royal Signals, including Twenty One Signal Regiment, two uh, two Signal Regiment, but I uh, predominantly majority of my career was based in uh, NTI Winchester, so I did a, a section commander force, and then from there on I went to uh, as a platoon sergeant. Was that in, was that in uh, St John Moore Barracks? Yeah, St John Moore Barracks. Yeah, That's yeah. what I did. Yeah. That I was one of the first uh, one of the first training things to go in there. Nineteen eighty six. Were you one LI? Were you, were one, you one, one LI. Yeah. So that was like the light division uh, yeah. trained there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, that's that's where Daniels. we both met down there. Uh, uh, but I mean, in terms of my service, I served for just shy of 14 years. I left to about two and a half. We pretty much left at the same yeah. time. Um, I left sort of uh, beginning of 2018, April 2018. Um, I served with the Queen's Royal Lancers and then we. Um, um, Amalgamated in 2015 with the 9th 12th to form the Royal Lancers uh, up in Catrick. And then, I mean, I served Iraq in 2006 and then two tours of Afghanistan. Um, and then uh, in 2015, I went down to Winchester, uh, section commander down there, finished my career. And, and, and it sort of seemed right for me to finish my career down there because I started, uh, you start, I start, started obviously in training, started in Harrogate and then sort of finished my career there as a, as a, as a, as a section commander. And, and, and for me, you know, that was, it was a real, uh, a real eye opener, but in the sense of I've seen it both sides now. So I've seen, you know, the, the initial part of, of, of uh, civilians coming through to be soldiers. And then, and then the, on the flip side, I've seen soldiers coming out to be to be ex servicemen and, and women, you know. So it's not uh, it's not easy, is it? I mean, hmm. if it was easy, we wouldn't be in a job, really. But you know, well, that's that's right. Right. people yeah. think you just, the grass is greener when you leave, hmm. but it's difficult to adjust. It doesn't matter if you've only been in three years to twenty yeah. years; it's still difficult to adjust because everything's done for you. You know. You, Basically, you you peers just to go out and they drink with or buy some clothes. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's masked with the fact that you give like a, you know you sign off and you've got a year to do things. So you think like oh yeah you 
you don't really occupy the time well, but you think, oh, I've got a year to prepare. Mm-hmm. So you kind of like, it's all mask, and then all of a sudden it's like, bang, right, you're, you're, yeah. you're on leave. This is your, you know, your life. But that's where I think, that's where we, like, fighting minds have come in, you know, come into play as well. And uh, from our past experience, it's like, you'll, you'll leave the army. You, you, you can think you can prepare for it, but you can never can. No. You know, you don't realise, you don't think about what comes with it. Like, if it's simple things like doctors, dentists, you know, like everything you're told when to be, where to be, how to be. Yeah. And then when you come with your life's your own now and you've got to make them decisions. Well, when you leave, they give you, like, a folder or in a bag, like, of yeah. leaflets and stuff. But to be yeah. honest, you just got put in a bin. You know, yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, well, I didn't, even, I didn't uh, even bring yeah. them out of Berlin with us. I just left them. You know, yeah, I, I think I think it's sort of potentially moved on in terms of the 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 uh, the support that's provided for when you leave. But I still think that there's this element of you've still got a job to do while you're in the army for that year, and that and that time is no longer you know it, as much as you think it's your own. It's not. It still belongs to the army, and you've still got to work around that. Um, and this is one one of the big big sort of questions that or or sort of things that we we potentially like to see change, especially like within within the, the military itself of, of actual sort of secured time for that individual to to go through um, their own sort of transition and get ready for for what's about to come and and, and um, because because no one can. You you you, can, you don't know how you're going to be until you get on the other side of the fence. You don't know how you're going to sort of react to certain situations. And it, it, although we're extremely flexible as as ex servicemen, you know that there's always someone there to throw a spanner in the works. Mm-hmm. You know potentially, or you know for for things to come back that you had not necessarily thought about while you was in service. Well, uh, we've we've got like a really really uh, exciting project starting or in the pipeline anyway but we'll yeah. talk about it when we're not on air and then right, see okay. and then we'll <laughs> see if see for your Sunland office if you yeah. can get involved mm-hmm. it's, yeah, quite a yeah. thing. it's never been done before what i'm, what I'm okay. going to attempt to do it's never been done before so it would be good to have other people on board too right, you know because yeah, yeah. I, I worked for a charity and they really didn't want you to ask anybody else for help because they were scared in case the funding went yeah. to them but yeah, with me, yeah, yeah. I just want as much help as possible. As the possible. idea is you just help the client with anybody who can help the situation. You know, that, that's what it's about. Yeah, it's not about fun. Yeah, that's we effort. yeah, we cross refer all the time because, you know, for the, there are stuff that we, and it's not necessarily that we don't want to get involved with it it's just that i can't find the time to do that and and i know that there are better there are people out there and, and charities out there that are better at it than than what what i am and and have been uh, along in the tooth at doing it you know and and know exactly the process and and, and that's and it because it's not about me and it's not about the the reputation of fighting minds or us as a company etc as a, as a cic as a not-for-profit it's about the, the individual that you're helping and the individual needs that that yeah, is that and and I think like in the bigger charities that gets lost. I think you're right. Yeah. I think yeah. it gets lost and I, and I think that's where when things get too big, I think you know you come unstuck because it's about yeah. money yeah. and it's you know you lose that personal truck trumping. You know you do you know and I see it all our stuff you know if somebody else can help just ask for the help. Yeah. Yeah, we use yeah, we yeah, use yeah, a whole right. city wide approach in Sunland. So from the council, Gen two, the GP surgeries, the door, yeah, a- anybody, you know, if somebody yeah. can help, well, I'm happy for them to help. Like, yeah, and I think I think that's another thing though about doctor surgeries as well. And I don't know what the setup is is like in 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 Sunderland, but I think there, there's a there's a um, the, because there's there's a there's a de- there's a detachment between each sort of like GP like one surgery will be doing it like absolutely fantastic you know where all the information's there and then you go to another one and there's nothing you know there's nothing in place there's no there's no sort of contingency and I think and and you know like I've had many conversations with people especially in the northwest from doctor surgeries and 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 across like sort of in Liverpool and that and you know you. And, and and I'm all for giving people advice, you know, but I can't, you know, there has to be a sort of, I think, actual process or structure in place that everyone knows exactly where to go to and who can help that person out in this situation, etc. But it is difficult. It's extremely difficult. Well, we actually uh, won a, 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 a national award because uh, we were the only 
people to have a armed forces champion in every GP surgery in Sunderland. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That, that's the way it works, you know. They, they know with any anything to do with veterans that that surgery as an armed forces champion that then yeah. contacts us. Cause, yeah. you know, because some of the stuff is like social prescribing, so people are just lonely or people are unfit, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah, 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 Doctors yeah, yeah. don't need to be dealing with that sort of stuff, so we can do it. So, yeah. I mean, I'm quite happy to share that model with you if you want to try. Oh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be good, that'd be good, yeah. yeah. Really good. And we have, I mean, at the minute, it's a bit, you can't do it at the minute, because uh, we have every veteran that's identified gets a bag with loads of leaflets in. Yeah. So, when this COVID thing's whatever's going to happen with it because at the minute we can't give leaflets out so i've had millions yeah, of leaflets yeah, and yeah. booklets and everything and we can't give them out but when they do if you get leaflets we put them in every bag so every yeah. veteran in sunland will get them they're not putting yeah. any leaflets out into any surgeries or anything where you can pick yeah. up stuff but in the bag that they get we can we how, how have you found it, Joe, with, uh, you know, the, with, with all the COVID-19 stuff and that, you know, how, how have you got on with that? Yeah, uh, it's difficult because we're, we're like a people service, so it's, yeah. everything's done face to face. But we, yeah. you, you just had to um, sort of improvise, adapt and overcome, and yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. it. The first, yeah. so I get, when it all happened, lockdown, I've got an office manager called Claire. I give her the yeah. option that she would full pay, just not coming to work. She, she didn't yeah. want that, so she came to work every day with me. So me and her yeah. came in the office, we didn't have any clients and we did everything remotely. Um, yeah. Only since the sort of slackening off of uh, things that we've allowed, we started off with one person in the ERV, then we're up to like four, but we've got four floors, so we can yeah. use different rooms for different things. We have all yeah. the policies and procedures in place, well, the, the rooms get cleaned down after someone's been in, you know, yeah. socially distanced. We've, we've made the backyard into like a place where more people can come and be safe because they're a safe distance, being outside. You know, it's never got, it's never going to feel the same as it did in the first place because in here we could have like 20, 30 people just having a laugh. Yeah, stuff, yeah. You know, and the art, the art therapy is going to be different now. So we're looking at virtual art therapy. So, what we're going to have to do is buy each person who wants to do it their own equipment. Because before, right. you could share equipment. Now, yeah, yeah. everybody's going to have to have their own equipment. Yeah, yeah, not to yeah. give it to anybody else. You know, yeah. that's how mental it is. But yeah. until it's all, I mean, whether it changes or not, it might be the new way we've got to work. But yeah, yeah. it's the same for everyone, really, isn't it? You know, yeah, I mean, that was the same for us. I think we sort of initially just sort of, we had in the in in the, in mind anyway that if we was to get locked down that we'd uh, we'd basically move to a virtual sort of uh, delivery. delivery and and for some people to be honest with you that's really helped them because it, the anxiety of actually meeting someone new etc can it, inconvenience you know doing it from the home home and that but obviously there are a lot of people out there that enjoy the face to face contact and we get that. And for a time, we couldn't do that. But now we're actually, you know, we're back into sort of 50-50 really now, meeting meeting face-to-face and that, which is good because, you know, if you've just been done one today, yeah, aren't you? Exactly. Disability awareness training. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and obviously they're implying, the, the, you know, the, the workplaces that we're going into, they're implying their own sort of response to it. So you have to adhere to that. So... You know, the, but again, like I say, that 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 sort of lends itself really to to the ex serviceman a veteran, you know, of, of understanding, but also being flexible and, and, and sort of think thinking on the feet, if you like. Mm. Well, the, no the drawback so. the drawback for us is we used to have like a coffee morning every Tuesday, right. in, a, in a in the Gunners Club in Sunderland, and that used to attract about fifty people. Now, yeah. the Gunners has been closed. So we're having it in a park in Sunderland, in a bandstand. But yeah. there's only about 15, 20 people. Because you can't yeah. have 50 people in a bandstand, you know? No, 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 yeah. so, um, hopefully, yeah. the Gunners is going to open at the end of this month. And we can have maybe them 20 people in the in where we had 50 before. But right. I'm not really sure how it's going to work, as in, do we turn people away? Do we say, at the door, one person comes out and you can come in? 
you know. Yeah, it's quite worrying, isn't it? Because you think, what, where are the other people going who are missing out? Like, there's 30, you're talking yep. 30 people there who you used to rely on your support, and it's like, what, you know, like, what yep. has happened? And, and what it, we like to do as well, we like new people to come there and then we can meet them and then bring them over here and take the referral. Just let yeah. them blend in. Now, what I don't yeah. want to happen is we can't do that because I want people yeah, to come and meet people. You know, because it's all about trust. it's all about interaction, isn't it? And uh, you know, like, communication and and trust as well. You know, building that trust up with someone because you know, like some people just don't don't like to sort of talk about. You know, the, the, the it's that that element of bottling it up, if you like. You know, the crack on being a soldier. Do you know what I mean? Well, um, it, and, I mean, yeah. I'd probably be the same as your thing. The banter that we've tried to recreate the banter of being in the services, you know. So everyone yeah. always takes the piss out the RAF, for instance. You know, yeah. I don't I don't want to miss that, you know, because that's oh, yeah. an integral part of this, you know. Yeah. Constantly. I mean, people people take the piss out of people for anything, you know, something really bad, a civvy would think you shouldn't have said that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you thrive on it, man, that's what you want. Yeah. So yeah. We yeah. have clients <laughs> that's been muddy coddled and by other services and oh, you know, I'm but really when you when you're a soldier, like you just want somebody to get your grief and match your feel. Yeah, that's it, and have a laugh about it. You know, mm. that's I think that's what I think in the in the in this in this whole sort of scenario situation, I think that's the 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 sort of the there's the potential for that sort of sense of humour to be lost. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you forget you forget that having that sense of humour got you through most things in the army. This is, you know? this is it, all right? This is it. That yeah. sense of humour gets you through everything, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you can't laugh about it, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter what's happening. You know, it doesn't no. matter what's happening. As long as you can laugh about it, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> what's your plans go moving forward? Are you expanding? I think, I think, uh, well, it, it was, it, it was, it was, again, January, we, we, we sort of, uh, we, we, we went into partnership with uh, Walking with the Wounded, um, and uh, we, we had a referral route set up through them, um, and it basically sort of just got to a point where uh, we, we, it was, you know, we were going and, and, and we were ready for expansion, etc. cetera, um, and and then obviously everything stopped and i think it's just sort of um now that we're getting back on getting back on the sort of um on on the train you know back on the circuit and and getting out there and re-engaging i've got um i've got my ambassador side si maloney he's meeting up with um a guy called efram from strongmen i don't know if you've ever see, uh, heard of strongmen so um he, he's meeting up with him um on thursday and, uh, and 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 just reconnecting with people, you know, this is come at a, a good time. Just reconnecting with, you know, those those connections that we made prior to to, to lockdown and, and 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 getting things going again. You know, getting the word out there that you know there is a service that does provide support to veterans in work. Well, I mean, when this goes out, people will, people will, especially in Sun. I hope people from around the country watch this podcast. But yeah, yeah, perhaps not. You know, um, yeah. but in Sun, we have quite a lot of views. Uh, yeah, these, yeah, yeah, these zooms ones go out on uh, Facebook as well, whereas right, the, yeah. the other the ones upstairs in the studio, because they mm. were an hour, an hour and a half long, they would just well, go out on YouTube or Spotify or iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't been yeah. using upstairs obviously because of COVID. Of course. Yeah. Um, when when that relaxes a little bit, we've set it up now with uh, so it can be live, and right, and, yeah. and also have a phone in. So oh, I right, probably yeah. get abused off people on the phone yeah. instead. Yeah. Instead of just waiting to get abused in the street. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> abused on, on the phone line. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's one thing that we're thinking about doing, but we're actually moving to a new building soon, um, and we're just waiting for that. And you know, and doing an actual podcast and on on anything really. You know, like I think it's the way forward, and definitely because you know, it, not only does it get you engaging with other people outside, you know, it, it's um, it. it People enjoy it, you know, just putting it on in the car on your way to work yeah. or something, you know, listening something to it. To it. Something that you can relate to, especially like, you know, vet veterans, you know, I, I listen to a few podcasts, veterans related, and, and they, they, they are, they're brilliant, you know, reconnect again. Well, I've, the Zoom ones I've managed to do without swearing. Now, well, <laughs> when I'm in the studio, you know, it's just loads of swearing, you know, I mean, yeah. but... When I first started out doing them, we sent them to about six people and 
say, can you just watch that from different walks of life? Can you listen to yeah. that and watch it and then tell us what you think? And they were like, you can't say that, like, you can't say that. <laughs> and then, but then I, I thought, like, there's loads of podcasts that are just yeah. normal. You know what I mean? So I thought, yeah, I'm not hurting anybody. You know, we've yeah. decided to stay away from religion and politics, but everything yeah, else right. can't say. Yeah, yeah, the thing, the thing is, if people don't want to engage with it or don't want to watch it, they don't have to. So yeah, well, we put um, I got my daughter to do like an intro, saying like, yeah, you're yeah. easily offended, didn't listen, like it's not for you. you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got um, I got asked if I wanted to them play it on a radio station, but he was like, you kind of be swearing, yeah. like, and I was like, no, 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 no. I'd, I'd rather just have the the people who want to listen to it or watch it. You know, it's, yeah, I'm not harming anybody by swearing. I mean. Sometimes we have a couple of bottles and that if we're if it's a canny crack on a night, you know. But these yeah, ones, yeah. obviously, I, I'm sitting in work. I'm not going to be drinking and swearing. I'm a, that's well, <laughs> I've got to, I've got this far through this one without swearing yeah. half an hour in. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, when I had the mayor on, I think I only swore once. Yeah, <laughs> it just comes swear. out. Oh, it just comes yeah. out, man. Just comes out. Yeah, oh, it's just. Awesome. I think. I think you get comfortable, don't you? Getting to that sort it. of. Yeah, and I feel when you talk about something you're passionate about, and something means something to you, natural, yeah. you know, the natural uh, instinct is to yeah. sort of put a swear word in there. Do you know what I mean? It's... I think as well, you know, some stories sound funnier when you hear swear, like yeah, when you swear, swear yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, it just it's... sounds too too dry when they're yeah. not. When they're uh, uh, you know, I, think, I'm, I'm... I think that's what I think that's one thing that you know, we're, especially with like transition for me, like. As much as in when I'm in an environment where I feel comfortable, then I will sort of engage with swearing and that. But I, I, it's one thing that I found is initially difficult at the start is is obviously curbing the language because you you know day to day life in the army it's just like every every word is a swear word. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Well, I, I worked for a homeless charity for five years and and I basically at work stopped swearing. You know, I was really peace, really PC. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And as soon as I said Vicks up and I was surrounded by squaddies, just all came, all came flooding back. Flooding back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, huh? yeah. <laughs> I did. I do a lot of talks. Right? And I, uh, I did one at my daughter's school and I think she was about seven. And it was the yeah, most yeah. nervous I've ever been because I was really? just thinking, don't swear. Don't, don't swear. swear. And I got all the way through about swearing. But I did call a kid a racist and I said it to the back. <laughs> you know, I only said... <laughs> I only said, uh, does anybody know what uh, homeless people are? And he put his hand up, he was tiny, he went, they can't speak our language. And in my mind, I just went, a bit racist, get to the back. And he stood up and went to the back, and I was like, no. <laughs> 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 so I've, I've shied away from speaking in schools now. Yeah, just yeah, to yeah. adults Probably. now. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything, before we finish off, is there anything you want to get out there? Any message you want to uh, think about? Yeah. If you send me some links or something like that, the lad who does a jaw from Tile Image, he can put them along the bottom. So yeah, while this is on for the half hour, they'll be running along the bottom. I, I think it's just, um, you know, the, the social media sort of, I put a lot of stuff out, a lot of content on there. So, you know, uh, follow that. Um, and also, what I'll do is I'll send you over the links for the Next Step Centre, so you can put that on there. Um, and, uh, and and just that, the, 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 have a look at the website. The, on the website, uh, on our website, it take, there is links on there. For instance, if you are in work and you know there's, you know, the, the thing that you know you think that you could uh, benefit from from what we can provide, or your employer can benefit from what we can provide, and that there's links there to how to actually get um, uh, how to get the support um through the government website and it'll take you straight through there it's very self-explanatory and very easy to fill out and if and, it, and and again it's if if people want want the information or they you know they want to talk more about access to work or anything that we can do just give us a ring and i'm more than happy to answer the phone um or answer an email etc all our information instagram for instagram or through facebook uh, linkedin we're on there um and and, and again uh, like i said throughout and there to help the individual and and you know any message is, is well welcomed and uh, and and will be replied to well you can uh, get your lad in Sunderland to come round when uh, see it on the when, when they're in the park yeah, 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 we, we, i mean we 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 could we'll travel up or we'll get gary come over yeah right. um yeah definitely 
I just say, I just want to remind people that there is support out there yeah, available. Yeah. The fact that, you know, people don't need a diagnosis for this. They don't need any any medical terminology for it. You know, they think they need help from a mental health perspective in the workplace, whether it's military related or not. You know, veteran we're there to give support. And the, the difference is, it's a great got service, a, lads. Great service. Yeah, it's yeah. It really is. Is, is it uh, welcome to come and have a look around the ARV when you're in Sunderland as well? So just yeah, yeah definitely. We'll be we'll be up in the next few few weeks to months anyway, Joe. So definitely come over and have a brew and that. Brilliant. Right, nice speaking to you, lads. Nice one. Cheers, Cheers Joe. Nice one. See you later.